Hello everyone and welcome back to my Warhammer 40k guides. I am Brady and today I will be giving you part 2 of my Phoenix Rising showcase and review. This video will be dedicated to the Drukhari part of the Phoenix Rising book. This is my favorite faction to play competitively and I love the look of all of their models which is honestly what initially drew me into wanting to play the army so I was extremely happy when they first got their codex and it turned out to be a pretty strong army on the tabletop. I released part 1 of the Phoenix Rising showcase yesterday where I went over my thoughts on a lot of the craft world stuff you can find in this book and I'll have a link for it down in the description in case you missed it and want to check it out. Later next week, I will be releasing part 3 of this short series where I go over the Inari stuff that you can find in this book. Originally, I was going to try to put out part 3 the day after this one, but I actually have a lot on my plate right now, and there's some other videos I want to work on first, so the Inari are just going to have to wait. Also, the Phoenix Rising book is available for pre-order on the Games Workshop website, and also comes in their Blood of the Phoenix collection box set that is also available for pre-order. So like all of my review videos, I will go over the aspects of the book that I like, think are interesting, or that I think will be good to use in competitive play. Since that's what I enjoy the most about playing 40k, is playing competitively. I'm not much of a lore guy or a narrative guy, so I'm going to be skipping those parts of the book, and I'm just going to be talking about the rules and stats and the combos I've found that I think can actually be really strong. There are rules for how to create your own custom Drukhari armies, and there are also new data sheets for Jazar and the Incubi. Unfortunately, there are no new stratagems or anything like that for Drakari in this book. We pretty much only get the two new data sheets and rules for making custom armies. With that said though, the stuff that we did get is pretty good, so I'm happy with it. And so now with all of that exposition out of the way, let's just jump right into it. Let's discuss the new rules for creating custom armies. So like the Craft World custom army stuff, there is a list with Drukhari names so you can name your characters and keep them lore friendly. It has a list of a bunch of first names and a list of a bunch of last names. So you can combine them and come up with some cool combinations for names for your characters. That has nothing to do with the rules, but it's really cool and it goes with the custom armies, so I wanted to mention it. And now for the actual army customization rules. Let's start with my favorite part of the Drukhari, and that is Cabals. There are eight different abilities you can pick from to make your custom Cabal a Obsession. And you can pick two of these abilities for your custom Cabal Obsession, or for your quote unquote chapter tactics in Space Marine terms. The thing is though, if you do use a custom Cabal, Coven, or Cult, as far as I'm aware, you won't gain access to any of the Cabal, Coven, or Cult specific stratagems from their Codex, or their Relics, meaning no access to Agents of Ect, and no access to Rid of the Living Muse, which to be honest is kind of a big loss. So even if I did want to make a custom Cabal, or custom Coven, or custom Cult for competing with, I would still include either an Airwing Detachment of Black Heart with three Razorwing Jet Fighters to gain access to Agents of Ect, or a Spearhead of Blackheart that includes an Archon with the Rid of the Living Muse Relic and three Disintegrator Ravagers. But alongside either of those detachments, you could theoretically include a Battalion that is a custom Cabal, Coven, or Cult. And the reason I say to use a Battalion is because you kinda need to farm up some Command Points to be able to spend on Agents of Ect since it's four Command Points by itself, while also having some extra Command Points for other Stratagems. So normally how I personally run my Drukhari is a Spearhead Detachment plus two Battalions. So anyways, let's Let's get into the combos I've found that I think are decent. The first combo I'd like to talk about with you guys and gals combines the rules Disdain for Lesser Beings and Webway Riders. Disdain for Lesser Beings makes it so that only one model from your units can ever run away due to a failed morale test, so pretty much makes them close to fearless. And Webway Riders makes it so that you can use the Webway Portal stratagem twice instead of once, so you can put four units into Deep Strike by paying six command points, which is a hefty fee in command points, but if you have enough by bringing like three battalions or something like that, you should be able to get away with this pretty easily, while still having command points for other things. So I could see bringing a battalion of this custom cabal and bringing four 20-man blobs of cabalites that can deep strike using the webway stratagem, and then you throw in some splinter cannons and shredders. Turn 2, you can deep strike in two squads or all four squads right beside an Archon who flew up the field in a Venom or a Raider and jumped out to be in position to give both or all four squads rerolls of one to hit. This means you can have 80 or 160 poison shots and 8d6 or 16d6 shredder shots depending on if you dropped in two units or all four units. Personally, I think it would be best to drop in just two units on turn 2 and then drop in the other two blobs on turn 3. This way, the first two units can shoot some stuff to clear clear an opening for the next two units to drop in and possibly get better targets. On average, dropping in just two of the units and shooting with them kills around 29 orc boys that have a 5 up and vulnerable save from a custom force field. That's not bad for 344 points worth of shooting, but that also assumes that everyone is in rapid fire range and that you have an archon nearby to give rerolls of 1. And sure, Cabalites aren't all that durable, because they basically just have Guardsman durability with an extra 6 plus feel no pain. 
But because only one of them can run for morale, your opponent better hope that they can kill every single one of them to actually finish off the unit. So this gives Cabals a valid horde type strategy in my opinion, if you wanted to play a horde Cabal. There is one downside to this type of list though if you play an ITC format, and that's that this list can give up full secondary points for the Reaper, since just with the Cabalites alone you have 80 models, and that's not including the other 1312 points of your army. And like I said earlier, it's actually incredibly easy to murder Cabalites, so be wary of that if you're running this style of list. Another combo involves the Disdain for Lesser Beings trait, which is the basically fearless trait, but this time combines it with Soulbound, which allows your units to reroll rolls of 1 for their failed feel no pain saves. This is probably the best combo if you want to use more than 4 giant blobs of Cabalites, and if you're okay with foot slogging them up the board. Personally, I still much prefer the first combo with deep striking in 4 blobs for a good beta strike, but if you really wanted to play a massive horde of Cabalites, then this is probably the combo you want to take. Either that, or replacing the rerolling ones for failed feel no pain saves for another ability called Toxin Crafters, which makes their wound rolls of 6 for poison weapons do 2 damage instead of 1. This will make your mass poison shots better at killing stuff like big tyranid bugs like Hive Tyrants, or even demon primarchs like Mortarian and Magnus. So now let's talk about the Witch Cult obsessions and the combos that I like from their choice of abilities. Like the Cabals, there are 8 abilities to choose from and you can pick 2 for your custom cult. The first cool combo I found combines the Art of Pain and Stimulant Innovators. The Art of Pain makes it so that your units that have the Power of Pain ability gain their bonuses one turn sooner. This bonus only comes into play though when your units are within 1 inch of enemy models, so when they're in close combat. With that said, that does mean that if they're in close combat by turn 2, they're going to get the turn 3 bonus, which means they're going to hit on 2s in close combat. The Stimulant Innovators just makes it so that if you use the Hyperstim Backlash Stratagem on a unit with this trait, that Stratagem only costs 1 command point instead of 2 command points. And that Stratagem basically doubles the bonuses you get from using combat drugs. So if you have a unit with the plus 1 attack per model combat drug, that unit now has plus 2 attacks per model when you use this Stratagem on them. And I believe it's only for that turn. But at the end of the battle round, you roll a dice for each model that was affected by this Stratagem, and on rolls of 1 they suffer a mortal wound. So what this combo does is it allows your witches to be more effective at killing things sooner in the game, since they pretty much fully come online in turn 2 instead of turn 3 with the power from pain bonuses. And with something like a Flayed Skull Venom transporting them or a Blackheart Raider, they can easily get into combat turn 2. And then with the Stimulant Injector bonus, you can easily buff up one of your units to make it extra killy, with the minor downside of maybe losing a model or two to those mortal wounds. And here's another cool trait that you can actually take on Witch Cults. This trait actually can't be combined with any other traits, so this one trait is your whole obsession by itself, and it's called Acrobatic Display. This ability increases your units and vulnerable saves by one if they are in combat with an enemy unit. I think this would be really good if you plan on not using your witches for killing stuff, but rather just holding enemy units in combat with a shard net, since the witches will become pretty durable with a 3 plus and vulnerable save in close combat. And now let's get into the custom covens before we move on to discussing the new Drazar and Encubi data sheets. The first combo I like for covens combines the rules Dark Technomancers and Experimental Creations. Dark Technomancers make it so that when you choose a unit to shoot with, you can enhance their weapons, which means they get plus one to wound and plus one to their damage characteristic. For any rolls of one to hit though, the firing model suffers a mortal wound, so it's kind of like overcharging plasma weapons. And Experimental Creations gives plus one strength to all models with this ability, and when you're resolving an attack made by a poison weapon against a model whose toughness is lower than the attacking models, the poison weapon gets plus one to wound. So if you included some venoms in a detachment making use of this combo, your venoms would wound most infantry in the game on twos, and they would do two damage a pop. I also think that this trait would work well on Talos especially Splinter Cannon Talos. You can still make use of the plus one to wound and plus one damage on Haywire Blasters, since with the plus one to wound, you get mortal wounds against vehicles on wound rolls of three plus, and D3 mortal wounds on vehicles on rolls of five plus. And then of course, the plus one damage you get helps if your opponent fails their save, so then they're gonna be taking two damage from the initial shot. The trade off for this though, is that the Talos lose out on the four plus involve from being Prophets of Flesh, and you lose out on being able to take Irian Rakarth, and he adds plus one toughness and strength to the Talos unit. And being stupidly durable is part of the reason that I believe Talos and Covens in general have been doing so well in the meta. So it is a trade-off. If you want more durable Talos and more durable racks and stuff like that, you're probably going to want to stick with Prophets of Flesh. But if you want more killy stuff, then this type of trait is probably what you're going to want to go to. So I assume we will see this trait in future competitive lists. Also, I think it's a shame that you can't take Coven Ravagers, because I think the plus one to wound and plus one damage would be amazing on Ravagers, and actually give Blackheart Ravagers a good replacement. 
other than losing out on Agents of Act and Rid of the Living Muse, of course. But unfortunately, Ravagers are Cabal only. I also think that this trait would be really strong on Haywire Scourges, since like the Haywire Talos, they would get mortal wounds on wound rolls of 3+, plus and D3 mortal wounds on wound rolls of 5+, plus. but unfortunately, Scourges can't benefit from Obsessions. Now let's move on to talking about the new rules for Drizar and the Incubi. First off, the Drizar model is amazing, and as soon as I saw it on the Warhammer community site, I was instantly in love and decided that I'm gonna buy that model just because he looks so good. Even if his rules aren't the most competitive, I would still love to paint and play with that model. But luckily for us, I actually think his rules are pretty decent. Drizar has a 7 inch move, weapon skill and ballistic skill of 2 plus, strength 4, toughness 4, 6 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9, and a 2 plus save. He is also 120 points, so points wise he hasn't really changed, but he did gain an extra wound this time around, and an extra ability. For his abilities he has power from pain, which is standard for Drakari infantry, and for his unique rules he has 5. The first is called murderous assault. This ability allows Drizar to fight twice if he charged that turn, so he's basically a Drukhari Berserker. This means if he makes a charge, he will get 8 attacks, or 12 attacks if you use one of the profiles on his weapon that I'll get into in a minute. The next ability is Lethal Precision, which makes his wound rolls of 6 add 2 damage to the attack characteristic for that wound. This is a nice little bonus, since it means if you get lucky you can do 4 damage a pop. But again, you need to get lucky for that to happen. His next ability is one that he's had before, and it's Eternal Warrior which gives him a 5 up invulnerable save, so that's pretty self explanatory. His next ability is Master of Blades, which is also something that he had before. But this time around, it's a little different. He used to give friendly Incubi within 6 inches of himself plus 1 to hit, but this wasn't really all that beneficial, because Drizar himself already hits on a 2 plus, and on turn 3, the Incubi hit on a 2 plus as well because of the bonus from Power of Pain. But now this ability gives plus 1 to wound to all friendly Incubi within 6 inches instead. So, in my opinion, this is definitely an improvement to the old iteration of the ability. As for his war gear, his melee weapon received an upgrade as well. Both profiles now have a damage characteristic of 2, so this makes him better at killing stuff like intercessors, bikes, or even infantry characters. One profile of his weapon is minus 3 AP and plus 1 strength, and the other profile is strength user, minus 2 AP, but you get 2 extra attacks, so he will have 6 attacks altogether, or 12 attacks if he charged and can fight twice. So overall, I think this was a good improvement to Jazar, and I am actually considering trying him out in some of my Drakari lists. A while ago, I wanted to make a list with two Cabalite battalions, but couldn't do so without bringing Drizar or Inari characters, since for two battalions, it requires you to bring four HQs, and Cabals only really have one HQ choice, which is the Archon, and because of the rule of three, you could only have three Archons. So I think Drizar is worth testing out now, mainly for this reason, but also because he seems to be a pretty decent beat stick now. And now before I finish up this video, let's talk about the Incubi. So from what I can see, the Incubi's data sheets haven't really changed at all, and they are the exact same points as they were before this update. But, Drizar's ability to buff the Incubi change to give them plus one to wound, which I think could actually be pretty beneficial to the Incubi. So I think these guys might be worth testing out as well, as long as you bring Drizar to hang around with them. I'm still not necessarily sold on them, but I mean, they do get a boatload of attacks, and with the plus one to wound from Drizar, I do think they could do some decent damage. Also, like I said earlier in the video, the new plastic models look amazing, and I can't wait to pick them up and test them out on the tabletop. So that's it for this video review. Let me know what you guys and gals think down in the comments. I still read every comment on my video, so feel free to let me know what you think about the book itself, or even my thoughts about the book. Also, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button, and feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you want to see more content like this. Also, check me out on Patreon if you'd like to help support the channel even further, so I can expand the channel, and possibly hire an editor to help me out, so I can make more videos more consistently. Also, thanks to all my current patrons for being awesome and supporting the channel. I couldn't do it without you guys and gals, so thank you very much. With that said, I'd like to thank all of you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Happy Wargaming.